Now, when we say the word universe, we're already picturing this vast space filled with stars, planets, and comets. Truth is, most of us find it hard to actually picture how large the universe is. Well, try to think of space as the biggest playground you've ever seen. Right now, our space playground goes on for 46 billion light years. It wasn't always like that. On that note, you've surely heard of the Big Bang Theory. Let's try to unpack it. Imagine the whole wide universe, every star, planet, down to the smallest particle, squished into a tiny, super-hot ball the size of, let's say, an apple. From that point on, we've got a pretty neat roadmap of how things unfolded in the cosmos. Dive even deeper into the universe's past, and things start to get a bit blurry. The energies and temperatures rise, and suddenly, our rulebook of physics doesn't make sense anymore. When we reach these early times, gravity, that force that keeps our feet on the ground, starts acting all mysterious. This is where we bump into the great puzzle of our time – quantum gravity. And here's the honest truth – we've still got some homework to do on that one. What made the Big Bang go pop in the first place? Well, it's kind of like asking what happened before the first page of a book. There's no page zero. Or at least, that's the answer that quantum physics provides. It tells us that there are events in the universe that just, you know, happen. It's not because we're not looking where we should, it's just how the universe works. Or at least, that's our current understanding of it. Right after the blast, everything was just a bubbly mix of gas like this soda can that just got open. This gas, which was mainly helium and hydrogen, began to stretch out and cool down. If we could time travel to those times, we'd see a younger, hotter, and cozier universe. Cool telescopes like the Hubble and James Webb let us peek into those ancient times. And what we see is fascinating. Earlier galaxies were like the cute photos of the universe when it was younger. Tinier, less heavy, and not as evolved as they are now. Over billions of years, the universe stretched out like a soap bubble. Imagine countless shiny marbles inside it, representing stars and galaxies. As the bubble grew bigger, the marbles spread out. Today, inside our bubble, we have trillions of galaxies. For every single galaxy we can spot, there are tons more we haven't seen yet. Some are too tiny, others are too far away. We still can't see them even if we use the fanciest telescopes available. Just to paint you a better picture, know that today our very own Milky Way is home to around 400 billion stars, similar to the Sun. It was a lot different in the past, though. Our galaxy began its journey like a little bundle of stuff, just a tad denser than most things in space. A lot of it was actually made of dark matter. Our closest star friend, named Proxima Centauri, is 4.2 light-years away. To put that in earthly terms, that's like taking a road trip around our planet millions of times. It's also about the same age as the Sun. If we could have looked at the exact spot about 5 billion years ago, it wouldn't have been there at all. Many stars live together in groups, kind of like families. However, most are solo adventurers, experiencing the vastness on their own. When you zoom out from our Milky Way and peek into the larger universe, it's more, well, empty. Like a vast piece of countryside between big cities. In our cosmic area, we've got some cool neighbors. The Andromeda Galaxy, for instance, is just a stroll away, in cosmic terms, at 2.5 million light-years. And there are lots of smaller galaxies too, like the Triangulum Galaxy and the Large Magellanic Cloud. Our local hangout spot, which includes all these galaxies, spans about 3 million light-years. As we explore further, galaxies seem to gather in clusters, like suburbs. Connecting these clusters are threads of galaxies, creating a giant web in the universe. Galaxies are clustered this way because, just like magnets, they love to pull stuff towards them. If we could turn back time, we'd see a different picture. That's because throughout history, the popular galaxies with lots of stuff became even bigger, while the less popular ones gave their items away. From Earth, we can only see objects that are 46 billion light-years away at the most. If we put all this space into a giant box, its volume would be unimaginably huge. 
The main reason our universe is such a grand spectacle today is that it's been growing non-stop. Every year, its size increases a little more. In fact, the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light. Sure, we can't feel it down here on Earth, but there are clear signs in the universe that it's happening. We're still not sure why the universe behaves like that, but scientists are working hard to figure out this mysterious expansion. Our understanding of the universe has changed a lot over the years, too. Back in the day, when our world had more trees than buildings, people from all corners of the Earth would gaze up at a twinkling sky above. For many, the sky was their roadmap, alarm clock, and spiritual connection point. Now, imagine not having a smartphone or a compass and still being able to find your way home or knowing when to plant your crops. That's because our ancestors had the sky. They knew when it was time to take care of plants, navigate ships, or celebrate special occasions all by watching the stars and planets. Long ago, people in Babylon spotted some stars that behaved a little weirdly. These stars seemed to have a mind of their own. Obviously, we know now that they weren't stars at all. They were planets, like Venus and Mars, that sometimes wink at us down here. There was also a time when we believed the Earth was flat. Well, at least some people did, before Greeks in the 6th century BCE figured out that it's round. They even managed to guess its size by watching shadows in different places. They were pretty close with their estimations, especially if you take into consideration their limited tools. Now, speaking of our planet, there was also a time when humankind believed the Earth to be the center of the universe. We also believed everything else was just spinning around it. That was until a man named Copernicus did a bit of research and figured out it was actually the Sun coordinating all the movement in our system. And soon after, other thinkers and stargazers joined in on the fun, changing how we perceive the universe using new tools. Speaking of tools, thanks to a telescope, Galileo found out that Jupiter had massive moons tagging along. We call them the Galilean moons today in his honor. But the universe kept tossing surprises our way. Some people started cataloging stars, clusters, and nebula, while others found mysterious rays that our eyes can't see. And just when we thought we had it all figured out, Edwin Hubble, not the telescope but the man behind the name, discovered something amazing too. He realized that other galaxies are in fact moving further away from us. These days, we're looking at the universe in a different way. We know how the timeline works now. We know that our time here on Earth is limited. No wonder astronomers are eagerly scouting through the vastness of space, looking for planets similar to ours. There is no other planet that can safely accommodate us in our solar system. But we can use our neighboring planets and satellites for scientific purposes. Take Mars, for instance. In the following decades, NASA is planning to send all sorts of devices and even people up there. If the experiment proves to be successful, we might end up living there for a while, or at least use it as a pit stop for our next exciting destination.